Hello friends. Welcome to a lecture on chemical engineering thermodynamics. This is Professor Arvind Prasad. I once again request you to subscribe my channel if you find it interesting. Please stay till the end of the lecture so that you learn the problem completely. Okay, my current subscriber base is somewhere around 600 and uh, 90 or so, 692 or 693. I need to touch a subscriber base of 1000 as soon as possible to make this project viable. So I request you to please subscribe my channel in case you have come here and you are watching my video. And of course, watch the complete video to get an idea of how to solve this problem, which is on your screen. Now, this problem has come in Mumbai University CET 2 paper, May 18. And the problem is 6A. Ammonia refrigeration system works between 266 Kelvin and 300 Kelvin. The vapor is dry at the end of the compression and there is no undercooling. The compression is through a throttle valve. Find coefficient of performance, power required to remove 120 kilowatt. Now, the data for ammonia that is the enthalpy of the vapor, the enthalpy of the saturated liquid, the entropies of the saturated vapor and the saturated liquid, and the volume of the saturated vapor, and the saturation pressures and the saturation temperatures are given to you in the table. Now, how do we proceed to solve this problem? I will not attempt to teach refrigeration here but to merely solve the problem. So to solve the problem, one should always remember that if you remember a fundamental formula that zero is equal to mass flow rate of any stream, okay, into its enthalpy per unit mass summation, where i is equal to 1 to n, which i is nothing but the stream numbers, plus q dot, plus w s dot. Okay. So, if you remember this formula, then you can solve any problem. Now, the first thing that he is asking you is the coefficient of performance. So, the coefficient of performance is nothing but the heat taken in the evaporator divided by the work done by the compressor, right? And he is also asking what is the power required to remove 120 kilowatt. So we will find the real coefficient of performance. Okay. We will not find here the COP as defined by the Carnot cycle. So how do we do it? First, we need to know what is the mass flow rate. Okay. Now, in the evaporator, obviously, what do we do is, what happens in the evaporator is, we can have a look here. The fluid after throttling, the throttling is from this position to this position. Okay. This is the throttling. In throttling, Okay, the enthalpy is constant. So the enthalpy here at this point is equal to the enthalpy here. Now, how do we come to that conclusion? It's fairly simple here. Let's draw the evaporator first. And the fluid enters the evaporator after throttling. Okay, so if we apply this equation to throttling, what do we get? We get summation of the mass flow rate entering the throttle valve that is m i into h i the enthalpy of the fluid entering the throttle valve minus m out that is the fluid flowing 
out of the throttle valve. So if this is MI, this is MO. This is MO and this is MI. Okay, into H O cap. Now, as you can see here, to the throttle valve, no heat is supplied, no work is also supplied. So this is equal to zero. So what do we have is MI is equal to M O. Well, we know that that the mass flow rate going in should be equal to the mass flow rate coming out. But more important than that is H I cap is equal to H O cap. That is the enth enthalpy of the fluid entering at this point is equal to the enthalpy of the fluid coming out at this point. Therefore, the enthalpy of the fluid entering the evaporator is three hundred and eight point one two. So the enthalpy entering it is three hundred and eight point one two. Now the enthalpy of the fluid leaving is going to be equal to the saturated enthalpy, which is 1435.136. So that's 1435.136. Now if we apply this law to the evaporator, what do we get? Zero is equal to M I H I cap minus M O H O cap plus the Q dot that is the heat removed per unit time in the evaporator. So we have got Q dot as 120 kilowatts. Therefore we can equate it 120 kilowatts is equal to the mass flow rate M I is equal to M O we know that. So, and the enthalpy out that is 1435.136 minus the enthalpy in that is 308, 308.12. So, we get the mass flow rate as 0 0.1065, 0 0.1065 kgs per second so you have it here on your screen i have calculated it out here it is 10.1065 kgs per second now to calculate the work done by the compressor now this is the compression stroke this is the compression stroke so we need to know the enthalpy at this point and we need to enthalpy know the enthalpy at this point now the enthalpy at this point the lower point 1435.136 is known but the enthalpy at the exit is not known so the enthalpy of the exit that is h1 is given by h0 that is the enthalpy at this point which is 1466.41 plus t into ds now why do we get plus t delta s we know that dh is equal to t into ds plus v into dp now from this blue point to this gray point the pressure change as you can see is zero therefore what do we have there's no vdp here and dh that is change in enthalpy in between the two points is nothing but t into delta s now we have the delta s here because we know the s at this point and we know the s at this point that is this point now remember one thing the s at the blue point lower point is going to be at s the gray point that is the s at blue point which is 5400 5.4 four two nine seven is going to be the s at the gray point also which is five point four two nine seven why because we consider that the compressor compresses isentropically it is an ideal compressor okay so if it's an ideal compressor remember one thing the temperature also in that case is going to be 300 and 300 kelvin 
So what do we have here? H1 is equal to H0, which is the enthalpy at the saturated of the saturated vapor at 300 Kelvin and 1,666 kilopascals, and T is 300 Kelvin, and delta S is the entropy from this point, which is the same as the entropy at this point. So entropy of this point minus entropy of this point, which is shown here 5.4297 minus 5.0139. Now, these entropies are also given in the table. This is the entropy of the fluid entering the compressor, which will also be the entropy of the fluid leaving the compressor. And this is the entropy of the saturated fluid at the discharge condition. Therefore, we get the enthalpy at the discharge as 1571.15. Now, the work done, it's simple. If you take this equation once again, what do we have is 0 is equal to mass flow rate of the enthalpy in minus the enthalpy out minus the enthalpy out plus the work done by the compressor. And therefore, we get the work done as work done is equal to 0 0.1065, that is the mass flow rate, the discharge enthalpy minus the suction enthalpy, which is 14.485. So the real COP is 120 kilowatts, that is the heat removed in the evaporator, divided by 14.485. So the real COP is 8.28 as per calculations. Mind you, this is not the cannot COP. Okay, and we also had to calculate the power required for 120 kilowatts. The power required for 120 kilowatts is here, which is 14.485 kilowatts. So that will be all, my friends. Keep watching and do write comments. Goodbye.